Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. Uh, depends on uh, where you're currently based at. Uh, I'm Richan from Monash University, Malaysia. The topics that I would like to share with you is a creative approach for unarmed civilian protections, the power of drawings and storyboards. My main objective here is to share my experience in adopting these um, creative approaches and uh, what I have learned. At the end of the sessions, I, I wish to also hear from you uh, how we could use this approach in the UCT context, if time permits, yeah. So my sharing is um, based on a project funded by the Changing the Story Network, Building Inclusive and Sustainable Civil Society a social entrepreneurship toolkit created by and for young people. This is a cross-sector and cross-border collaborative projects where we engage with young social entrepreneurs from Malaysia and Cambodia. For the academic partners, we have um, Dr. Andriana Drenchivia from the University of Sheffield. We also collaborated with two civil society organizations they are Impact Hub Pompen, Cambodia, and Social Innovations Movement Malaysia. This sharing would not be possible uh, without them so they to work together with me on these projects. So what are we going to cover today? So some of you may not be familiar with the term social entrepreneurship. I will first uh, briefly cover what we meant by social enterprises. Mm -hmm. I will then talk about our research process, uh, specifically why and how we have adopted storyboards and drawing as the art-based approach in our projects. Um, most importantly, I will reflect on what we have learned in the process, which may be helpful for some of you if you are also considering using visual for your future UCP projects. I will also briefly share our research output, the well-being toolkits for social entrepreneurs with you. Um, finally, I will discuss the potential of using an art-based approach in the UCP context. Uh, again, if time permits, I would also like to open the floor and hear from you to see how relevance in adopting visuals in UCP projects and what are the things that we need to take extra precautions um, to make it participation friendly and also inclusive for our participants in the UCP context. Social um, enterprises are organizations that aim to catalyze positive social and environmental impact through market-based mechanisms. Uh, you may be wondering how they are different from commercial enterprise and non-profit organizations. Uh, there are two aspects that we are focusing on. First, the primary missions of the organizations has to be uh, social goods instead of personal uh, wealth creations. Um, second, the social enterprises must have uh, business mechanisms where they could generate profit from the products or services that they are offering instead of solely relying on donations and philanthropic funds. For the research process, we adopt the humanistic perspectives as we believe that social entrepreneurs are the experts in their experiences. They are the best persons to share their lived experiences as young people actively engage in various social sectors in Malaysia and Cambodia. Um, you can see from our earlier project title, the project is to develop a social entrepreneurship toolkit by and for the young people. Uh, as a research team, we are very clear that we want to create something for the social entrepreneurship com community, but we are kind of mindful that we should not create this something that we think um, they need. That's how the idea of co-creations comes into the picture. Uh, we, we want our social entrepreneur participants to actually help us uh, to identify what would be genuinely useful for them. Yeah, instead of go ahead and create something thinking that, oh, they, they, they need it. Yeah. So first, uh, we have the core design events. Uh, this is the sections where we have adopted the art-based approach, which I will provide more details in a bit. Uh, after the core design events, we gathered that well-being is one of the critical areas where young people, um, especially the young social entrepreneurs, desperately uh, seek support. 
especially those who have just uh, embarked on the journey. Yeah. So why storyboards and drawings? There are so many other art-based methods that allow us to go beyond the standard interview. For our case, we, we explore different approaches, uh, taking into consideration the subject matters, um, the time that we have, the time that we need from our participants, and, um, the, and also the, the, the nature of our participants. Um, we have identified these two uh, approaches as the, the best fits into our needs and also the resources that we have. So the main motivations for us to even consider this art-based approach is that we actually appreciate the importance of um, including non-linguistic dimensions in, in our projects, as not everything could be easily expressed uh, by words. We would also like to see if there's other ways of um, trying to understand the, the lived experiences of social entrepreneurs who are often labeled as the hero in um, addressing social issues. So this is the storyboards that uh, we use. A few things to take notes of um, in designing the templates of the storyboards. Um, you, you need to tailor meet your storyboards to best meet the needs of your research objectives and also uh, your participants. Um, few questions that you may want to consider, including like, you know, how many boxes do you want to have? Uh, there's no strict rules. Um, I have seen as little as two uh, to ask the participants to just reflect uh, their before and after experiences. And I have also seen like um, eight or even 10 boxes um, how much instructions you would like to provide is, also, is another thing that you need to consider uh, when designing the templates. You can see here that um, we facilitated by stressing critical moments instead of specifying that the most difficult or most uh, or the happiest moment. We, we want to leave it to our participants to decide and define their, their critical moments. We also facilitated by um, the drawing by giving like probing here and there on the storyboards. Um, we also included uh, note taking spaces uh, at the bottom uh, of each boxes um, to help their reflections during the process. So you can see that we asked them about their feeling. We asked them about like who else involved in these experiences. So during the, the briefing before they start drawing, um, Few things that we, we stress include, um, uh, by the way, uh, this is my uh, collaborator, uh, Andriana from the University of Sheffield. Um, yeah, so number one, uh, we, we stress to them that, you know, we are not here to judge your drawing abilities. So feel free to draw anything. Uh, you can be as messy as possible. Uh, number two, um, this is not a competition. We are not going to evaluate your drawing. And finally, and I would say most importantly, uh, we reassure them that this is a very safe space for them to reflect and, and share uh, with their drawings. Uh, whatever shared among the participants uh, should stay within the room. And um, the researcher also um, makes sure uh, anonymity. Uh, if we use their uh, drawings for publications and presentations in the future, uh, like now. Of course, um, before they sign up for this core design event, uh, they have already agreed to participate and they understand uh, what they, they have committed to. So once we have given the instruction, we provide uh, ember time for the participants to work on their storyboards. Uh, this is supposed to be quiet time. So we play some reading music, we prepare coffee and cookies. Uh, we make the environment as comfortable as possible uh, for them to spend time reflecting uh, while drawing. We, the facilitators also remain in the room, but we, we don't talk much uh, unless the participants like need help uh, from time to time. So we, we noticed that um, how much instructions and how structured is the storyboard templates uh, are really like play an important role here. Uh, so we are trying to draw a balance here. So you know your participants the best, so you, you should know like how much instructions is, is needed on the templates. So for example, if you are working with children, I believe written instructions on the templates may not work very well. So you may have to give verbal instructions uh, when the participants navigate from one box to another box. Yeah, so um, it will affect the time that uh, needed for the whole process. Yeah. 
Finally, uh, this is about the interacting with the drawing. This is the most critical part for us. We are using the storyboard as the means for our participants to reflect and share instead of analyzing the, the drawing itself. So in other words, these um, storyboards were used as a basis for further investigations of their lived experiences and encourage them to, uh, to communicate, to share, to talk. Yeah, you can see that um, multiple interactions involved here. First, it is between the participants with their drawings. So when they share about their drawings, um, they talk about what does it mean to them when they draw certain things. Um, there are also interactions between the researcher and also the participants, um, but we kept this minimal. We mainly play the role of facilitator and we encourage conversations among participants instead. And finally, it is the interactions among participants with each other's uh, drawings. I remember quite well where one of the participants drew herself as one person versus a group of people uh, in her storyboard to illustrate how people around her, including her family and her friends who do not understand and appreciate what she was doing. And another participant immediately jumped and, and said, that's me. I feel exactly the same. I feel so lonely in this journey. So that's the moment where I, I felt like, you know, how powerful is visual and, and drawing in teasing out the genuine emotions and feelings of our participants. The, the first participants had difficulty to actually express by using the word lonely, but she actually drew it. Um, this is through the interactions that um, the, the interactions with other participants that we identified, it's just actually uh, loneliness um, in the journey of like doing good. Yeah. So also we observed that drawing itself um, and the interac uh, interaction process is um, uh, really powerful in reflections. Uh, there were occasions where participants shared similar sentiments on something and of course there were also in incidences where they have like completely different experiences so it is through these reflective conversations that we could we researchers could gather a more holistic picture of being a young people who actively engage in social or uh, sector as a social or uh, entrepreneur how, how is their experience like yeah so here I will just quickly share one of the drawings of our participants as an example. So you can like have a better idea of how, how does it look like after um, the storyboard is completed. Yeah. Um, here I'm gonna share another powerful art-based approach that uh, you can also consider in the UCP context, uh, mapping activities. Uh, the one that I show you here is on values mapping. Relationship mapping is also another tool that is quite uh, commonly used. Yeah. So in this values mapping, we ask our participants to um, use circles to represent the various life domains and how much they value each life domain. So the bigger the circle means um, the more importance of each life domain, uh, such as families, friends, the, the social enterprise, ledgers, um, etc. So this is uh, their ideal uh, value or their expectations. So um, on the other paper, uh, we ask our participants to reflect on their actual experiences in terms of like how much time you actually spend in each value domains. So the bigger the circle means they have spent more time in each domain. Um, here you can see that these participants drew the circles side by side. Uh, there are some other participants that actually drew the circle overlapping with each other to demonstrate the blurred boundaries between work and non-work and how their involvement in uh, social enterprise interfere into their family life and into their social life. Um, again, we, we gathered further details about their life experiences through their interactions with the drawings. Um, they explain and interpret uh, the size of the uh, circles, the positions of the circles, and most importantly, they, they, they reflected about their feelings on the mismatch of their expectations and their actual experiences. So they look at the first um, paper uh, where they, they drew about their values, and then the next paper says uh, their actual experiences. Yeah.
So putting things together, uh, what have we learned? First, we learned that it is not just the drawings that constitute the data. The interactions with the drawings is the key. For, for us, the reflective conversations with the drawings help us gather uh, so much rich data that further inform our study. Uh, we also observed that visual allows participants to go beyond verbal modes of thinking. And for our case, it helped us to include and capture a wider dimensions of lived experiences of young uh, social entrepreneurs. Uh, in other words, they are not just hero. Uh, they are normal human beings and there is actually potential cost and risk on their personal well-being while doing good, which we may have neglected if we do not actually adopt this uh, approach. Yeah. Visuals um, is also a very powerful tool to facilitate conversation, especially in the Malaysian and Cambodian context, where people generally need a bit more time to open up. Uh, with the presence of the storyboards, it helps to overcome the awkward moments of silence. Uh, because there is a basis of conversations, you know, everyone refers to the drawing that they have and then they can start, you know, chit-chatting and ask each other about like, you know, why do you draw it this way and things like that, yeah. Also with the aids of drawing, um, we managed to pick up certain aspects uh, which participants may not reveal in uh, interview, like for example, the example uh, that um, uh, I shared earlier, like, you know, I don't think another participants would be like, you know, so openly to reveal to me saying that, you know, I'm actually feeling lonely uh, in this journey. Yeah. And most importantly, uh, through uh, storyboards and drawings, um, the, our participants guided us uh, to the important aspects of their experiences. Um, that's their health and well-being, uh, which we researchers as an outsider may, may have uh, overlook otherwise. Yeah. So as a result, um, this doing good, staying well, uh, well-being to kids for social uh, entrepreneurs is uh, core develops. And we are very proud to say that this is the results of co-creations with the uh, young social entrepreneurs. Without their inputs, um, we are not possible to, to reach this year. We have um, co-pilot this uh, toolkits with a group of uh, social entrepreneurs before we finalize the toolkits. Um, they gave us uh, very positive feedbacks about how uh, they see their voices and also their experiences are being captured and reflected in the toolkits. And some of them even openly mentions that, you know, this is something that they have missed out in their incubators training and development program. Yeah. So what's the implications on uh, UCP that? Um, we feel that drawing could be especially useful for participants who need additional aids beyond expressing themselves verbally. Uh, drawing may also help overcome the language barrier in the context of a cross-cultural context. Uh, for example, um, children, um, refugees, and those who were forced to be relocated due to war or, or conflict, um, this drawing could be as an additional tool that helped them to overcome the fear or, or nervousness of being interviewed. For the refugee participants, being interviewed could be a, a traumatized experience um, as the interview uh, experience that they had was with the UNHCR to get their refugee cards or to make the decisions whether they could be relocated or not. So this experience was stressful uh, and the, the outcomes were generally like unpleasant. So they told us that, you know, our refugees participants told us that, you know, they really don't like to be interviewed. They, they got phobia with the terms um, interview. Yeah. So we, we consider um, like drawing could be used as like an icebreaker. Uh, it may even also work very well with children. So other than uh, storyboards and drawing, uh, there are many other uh, creative and visual approaches that you may consider. A, for example, like the earliest uh, sessions, uh, Neil actually shared with us the theater performances. But other than that, I think our, a lot of our colleagues from the Changing the Story Networks use video making. Uh, you can also consider photo. A, where you prepare a pool of pictures for your participants to choose and they can reflect uh, based on their choice and you can even ask them to bring a photo uh, to the sessions and, and reflect about it. Yeah, and of course drawings 
different types of drawing like self-portrait and mapping activities. Yeah, like for example, life journey. Here, I will just show you very quickly another visual tool that we captures in our Wellbeing Toolkits. Uh, this is a life journey map. Uh, we first show them a sample, then uh, we provide the templates for them to craft out their life journey thus far. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have. Uh, thank you so much for listening to me. Uh, I hope it is somehow useful to you. Uh, for those who are interested to know more about the Wellbeing Toolkits, uh, I have included the URL here. Uh, it is free. You can just go ahead and download it from Changing the Story website. Uh, if you wish to have uh, further conversations um, after today's sessions, you know, feel free to reach out. Uh, this is my email. And finally, I actually um, provide two reading materials here about using visual in research. For those who are really keen and interested to learn more about creative approach, especially art-based approach, um, I would recommend you to pick up these two books. Uh, Rose 2001 uh, covers quite a bit on how to analyze uh, visuals. Thank you.